Okay, well, apparently my cat thinks he's the star of the show. Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. I am Ashley, and today I'm going to be giving you my top five spooky reads for Halloween this year. So let's get going. The first book I'm going to talk about today is The Children on the Hill by Jennifer McManon. Uh, so this book is heavily inspired by Frankenstein, um, and it focuses on a past and present timeline. In the past, we have two children, and they live with their grandmother, uh, who is the director of an insane asylum. Like, it's a really laid-back, lax, insane asylum. Um, and so they kind of get free run of the place, but they can't go into the asylum itself. But they have, they're very smart children, and they have all sorts of uh, freedom that a lot of kids don't have. But then their grandmother introduces a new young child named Iris, um, and she really doesn't know anything about her history. But the grandmother is hoping that her children can kind of be a good influence for her. In the present, uh, we're looking back on the past and seeing how everything unfolded. So in the present, we see some of the aftermath from what happened in the past, which is still a mystery to us until close to the end of the book. But um, we get to see kind of what unfolded and what the repercussions of. And then we see that one of the main characters became like a monster hunter and she is hunting her long lost sister. So there is a amazing plot twist in this book. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I listened to it on the audiobook first and then had to buy the book just because it was so good. So really it was gripping. Um, I kind of saw the plot twist coming, but it wasn't presented in a way that you would typically see it coming. So it was still a surprise and I was like fist pumping that I was right. It felt so good. But anyway, this is a great, quick, spooky read. Uh, I highly recommend it. My next Halloween recommendation is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. So if you have not heard of this book, it takes place in the 80s. Um, the coolest thing about it is that every chapter is named after a song from the 80s and I actually made a playlist on my Spotify account just to honor that. But um, it's a really great book that focuses on female friendship as well as overcoming a possession. So we start out with um, these two friends and we get to see how their friendship developed. And then we see an event that changes their friendship a bit. And one of the characters becomes possessed or just starts acting weird. And so these events spiral. She starts making her friends go insane and all sorts of bad things start to happen around these characters. And so we get to see the power of friendship and how friendship is possibly able to overcome a possession, but I can't spoil it. So definitely read this book. It's really fun. It's kind of like a blend of horror and humor, which Grady Hendrix does really, really well uh, with his books. So check it out. I really think you'll enjoy it. It's a quick read and perfect for spooky time. Next spooky recommendation is Pen Pal by Dathan Arbach. And so this book is fantastic. It's super creepy and I cannot recommend it enough. I didn't even realize that it was based on a creepypasta that I read back on the internet in like 2012, 2013. Uh, but it focuses on a boy who is now grown up and he is looking back on his uh, past and seeing all these different events. And he's like, whoa, wait a minute. These were creepy. Like you see him in the woods and he's hearing noises in the woods or there's a scene where uh, he looks for his cat under the crawl space in his house and he hears footsteps above him and it's an abandoned house. Oh my gosh, like this book keeps you on the edge of your seat. Like every chapter kind of starts out normal. And then by the middle to end, weird things happen and you are questioning everything. So super good book. It took me like a chapter or two to get into. And then I was like, wait a minute, I've read this before. So I highly recommend this book. Seriously, if you're looking for something that will get under your skin uh, and you're looking for that super spooky Halloween read, check this book out. My next recommendation is The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. Um, if you have not heard of this book, this book is about a woman whose nickname is Mouse. And she 
is tasked by her father, who's really ill, to go and clean out her grandmother's house, who had just passed away. Now, her grandmother wasn't the friendliest woman around. Um, she was a hoarder, and so this house is in shambles. There is stuff everywhere. It is going to take her a long time to clean out this house. But while she's there cleaning, she starts to find some weird things as she uncovers all the trash, um, and weird things begin to happen to her as well. Like one night she's walking her dog and all of a sudden she ends up in this weird stony looking graveyard like thing. And there's stones that are staring at her. And then one time she's walking her dog through the woods and there's like a bone effigy staring down at her and then it disappears. So this book is creepy. It is a really good blend of humor and horror again, just kind of like Grady Hendrix. Um, I was listening to it in the dark and it was, it was freaky. Um, I had to pause a time or two, but seriously, a really, really good read. I cannot recommend this book enough. This book sent me on a T Kingfisher spiral. So after this, I read The Hollow Places and then I read What Moves the Dead and I just got an arc for their other book as well. So I absolutely love T Kingfisher. We'll read anything they put out. My final spooky book recommendation for this Halloween is Night Film by Marsha Pessel. This book is fantastic. It is a masterpiece that too many people have been sleeping on, including myself. I didn't even know this book existed until I heard about it in a podcast. So I had to check it out. It's kind of like a true crime meets cult thriller meets um, documentary. So it's really good. It focuses on this journalist who uh, in the past has had an encounter with this obscure film leader. Uh, who's kind of like a cult leader as well. And in the past, he's had a run-in with him. And so now, uh, several years later, his daughter mysteriously dies. And so the journalist is looking into it again. And so this book incorporates like tons of multimedia. Like it has pictures in it. So picture book, it has like uh, handwriting, it has like police files, it has all sorts of stuff. So it kind of feels like you're reading like a detective journal or really fun. Um, it is a bit long, but it's so good. Like I flew through this and I was just on the edge of my seat and things kept coming uncovered. It was like one plot twist after the other. And then they kind of throw you for a loop in the end and you're kind of left. It's kind of like an open ending. You're left to believe what you want to believe. So seriously, a super, super, super good book. Uh, if you are looking for something that is spooky, but not overtly heavily spooky. I mean, this is a good book to dive into. Um, it's not terrifying, but it did have some moments where I got like goosebumps. So amazing read. As always, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Uh, don't forget I am on Instagram at pages and ash. So if you want to come hang out with me there, that'd be awesome. Um, until next time.